I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. The bullets that ended Big Paul Castellano's life last night may very well have been a payoff for getting into such trouble with the feds. As the reputed head of the Crime Commission and the godfather of the Gambino family, his appearance in court every day and the preoccupation with his defense were bad for business. Experts say his associates may very well have decided Big Paul was more trouble than he was worth. Today. So here I am in New York City, the Upper East Side, Manhattan, and big shout out to my friend Anthony over in Gary, Indiana. Fantastic. Anthony said, uh, Scott. I said, yeah. And he said, uh, when you go to Manhattan, are you going to do a video about uh, Sparks Steakhouse? I said, nah, maybe. He said, will you do it for me? I said, nah, I don't, maybe. He said, come on. I said, I don't know. He said, please. I said, all right. So here I am. <laughs> Paul Castellano and Thomas Bellotti. Paul Castellano, the head of the Gambino crime family, Thomas Bellotti, his underboss, his bodyguard, they were murderers. The last time a mob boss was murdered in New York City, right up here, I can see it from here. I'm gonna tell you what happened here. John Gotti sat in a car right across the street, which is nuts. Now, I should probably use allegedly for everything I'm about to say because I don't wanna get in trouble with the mob again, so, but I mean, this is you know, it's kind of it's kind of all public knowledge. Kind of, I, I mean, but you know, just to be safe, I, I I don't want cement shoes, or you know, I don't want to end up in the East River, the Hudson River, A River. So don't don't look at me, dude. And I just don't. All right, it's too much traffic, too much foot traffic along here. So I don't want to end up, uh, yeah, yeah, wait, but yeah, I, I don't think so. That's, yeah, so I don't want to end up in any sort of river. I mean, would you? Come on. So let's walk up to Spark Steakhouse and show you where those murders happened. Show you where John Gotti was sitting in his car watching, and we'll talk about the case. The case? Well, the case. Not much of the case. They were murdered. It's done. John Gotti was convicted of it. Right this way. So, it was the night of December 16th, 1985. And forever, you know what, it changed or the way organized crime is done. See, Castellano was, uh, and his driver, Thomas Bellotti, they exited a Lincoln Continental just up the street here. This is East 46th Street. They were gunned down right here. Witnesses told police that four men wearing Russian hats and white trench coats, Stalin, Walked up to the car and opened fire with semi-automatic handguns they removed from beneath their clothing. And the shooters, they fled in a dark-colored automobile. Okay, so their bodies were right up here. Now, I believe Bellotti was on the street. Castellano was on the sidewalk as he was exiting the car. From what I know, I know that two days later, there was over 300 mourners showed up in sub-freezing temperatures to pay their respects to Castellano, who was walked, well, he was inside a Brooklyn funeral home. Two lines of double parked cars extended halfway down the block. The wake was just for the family, Castellano's son told the newspapers as he stood at the door well dressed. And it was, supposedly it was an open casket. Yikes. Now John Gotti around this time was an underboss as well, but he was part of a kind of a rival fraction inside the Gambino family. You're going too fast. And the newspapers described him as an aggressive leader of a crew of about 10 men that specializes in hijacking, loan sharking, gambling, and murder. And just a week after the death of Castellano, right up here, uh, Gotti was, had his coronation as the leader of the, uh, the Gambino crime family. Sorry, I'm stumbling over words, but I'm just kind of doing this. Here we are at the Spark Steakhouse. It was right up here where the silver wall is. Silver wall. So we know John Gotti, the Dapper Don, the Teflon Don, 
He reigned as the most high-profile mobster. He would have been sitting right across, probably about where those that tree is and that gray car is. He would go around in his $2,000 suits, and he never got never got caught for anything. But Sammy the Bull Gravano, his one-time closest confidant and underboss turned government witness, and it was revealed that Castellano had angered Gaudi and others with, among other things. Castellano didn't like the whole drug trafficking thing. He thought that was beneath the mob. But Gotti didn't believe in that. And also, I've also heard that Gotti was fearing that Castellano was going to eliminate him, so he carried out a preemptive strike. So Gotti and Gravano watched from here across the street. And then they cruised past just to look at the bodies, just to double check. And it was right here where I'm standing. He died on an empty stomach. And because it happened that way, the theory is the biggest mafia rub out of the decade took place with considerable help from inside the dead mobster's family. Six shell casings were on the pavement of East 46th Street, right next to the body of Paul Castellano Sr., the top mafiosi in the United States, the heir to the Gambino family, indeed, the son-in-law of the late Carlo Gambino, on trial for conspiracy and racketeering in a case stemming from an alleged auto theft ring. Ten feet away, Castellano's driver and bodyguard, 45-year-old Thomas Bellotti, the keys to his late model limousine, not far from his hand. So it's about right up here, because this silver wall is still here. This is, Sparks Steak has been here for years. Now, as I try not to get hit by yet another yellow cab, a couple days ago I couldn't find a cab to save my life, now they're everywhere. The car was parked right about here. And Thomas Bellotti's body was right around here. He was coming this way. And then on the opposite side, because he has exited the Lincoln Continental, Castellano's body was right here. So and I'm getting closer now as I'm figuring it out. Castellano's body was right here. This is where he was shot. He was exiting the car right here. And I'm remembering that there are some pictures with this pole in the in the, all the shots and the awning of Spark Steakhouse. So it would have been right about here. He died on an empty stomach. And because it happened that way, the theory is the biggest mafia rub out of the decade took place with considerable help from inside the dead mobster's family. Six shell casings were on the pavement of East 46th Street, right next to the body of Paul Castellano Sr., the top mafiosi in the United States, the heir to the Gambino family, indeed the son-in-law of the late Carlo Gambino, on trial for conspiracy and racketeering in a case stemming from an alleged auto theft ring. Ten feet away, Castellano's driver and bodyguard, 45-year-old Thomas Bellotti, the keys to his late model limousine, not far from his hand. I believe this door was open as well because I, I, I remember earlier today looking and there were some shots going this way with, you could see this door open a bit. But yeah, this is the location right here. One of the biggest mob hits in history was right here, which is crazy to think about. I mean, when I do true crime, I'm always very, I, I, it's just, it just comes out of me to be respectful and to be, because you're dealing with people's lives. I mean, but these guys were, these guys were some bad guys themselves. Doesn't mean they deserve their fate. I don't know. But, you know, live by the sword. Now, like I said, I'm just saying the story. If you work for the mob, there's no need to contact me. There's no need to get in touch with me. I'm just documenting what's already been documented. Just showing it a little closer. Please don't come knocking. Now, they've got some advertisements in the, in the uh, window here. The greatest stakes. I have a feeling they don't mention what happened here on the outside. I'm guessing that's not... Oh, they don't have a, they, oh do they have a menu? Want to see how much it is? 
So here's the menu. Shrimp cocktails, $21.95. Oh, that's reasonable. Prosciutto with melon, $20. That's reasonable. Steak fromage, $50. Filet mignon, $60. Lobster tails and broiled shrimp, $60. So you can see it's not Wendy's. It's not very reasonable. Oh, yeah? Is it reasonable? As Marge would say from uh, Fargo. But no, it's not very reasonable. This is it. This is, this is Spark Steakhouse. This is where it happened. Crazy. They were shot numerous times with automatic weapons. Questions. Caliber. Caliber where were they weapon. hit? They were hit in the head and in the body. I know that Paul Castellano was appointed uh, leader of the uh, Gambino family after Carlos Gambino died by Gambino himself. And he reigned for quite a while. And then John Gotti took over. And of course, John Gotti served a little bit of time finally and died in prison. John Gotti would have been waiting right over there, watching, watching it go down. And then drove up right where I'm standing to take a look at his handiwork, what he ordered. Allegedly. Allegedly. Alright, that's it for the story of how Paul Castellano was gunned down right here in Manhattan. Right at, uh, where am I? 46th and 3rd. Yeah, right here. All right, got somewhere else to go. More videos I'm making just for you. All right, have a great day. Peace and love. Peace.